What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back again with another video. So, we're going to check out Jim Cornette Reviews, CM Punk, and Jack Perry altercation footage on AEW Dynamite. Now, y'all know I had to check out what uh, Jim Cornette had to say about this whole situation with AEW airing the backstage footage of CM Punk and Jack Perry uh, getting into it. And I am sure that this one is going to be a good one because you already know how uh, Jim Cornette feels about AEW and, and how things have been going on their television. So sh this should be very, very interesting. Let's get right into this one. I already know this is going to be a, a, a great one, man. Let's do it. Well, and there, there was no audio whatsoever. And when the buckaroos pitched to it, it's, they couldn't narrate over it. I, I'm thinking there's some legal reason that they yeah, couldn't. So Punk doesn't sue them. That's well, but exactly I mean, so it they, it may, maybe they couldn't, maybe they couldn't transform it in any way or it would be so, because here's the thing. They've announced an incident took place that distracted them and caused them to lose. If we're just talking about an audience that watches this television program, if you're not following on Twitter, I know and for our audience, that's hard. To, there are people out there, though, that don't even listen to us. Imagine mm -hmm. that. <laughs> but if you're just watching this TV show, not social media, whatever, they've announced backstage footage of an incident between Jack Perry and another individual. And then when the footage comes up, there's no audio and there's no narration. There's no, there's Jack coming back from his match. There is the mm -hmm. other individual walking. None of that. Mm -hmm. the, you see Jack Perry and it's in color. And there's eight or ten people in, in the immediate area. And here's one thing. It, it, the gorilla position in the attitude era was like a fucking 10 by 10 foot tent with a lunchroom table, a monitor and three chairs and a light on the desk. And if you had room to stand in the corner, if you weren't in the way, you could sneak in there and generally on a raised platform with pipe and drape railing. So if somebody fucking stepped the wrong way, you might eat the fucking concrete. So if any kind of <clears throat> skirmish got triggered in that I instance, somebody might fucking take a bump. But this is a goddamn building hallway. Mm -hmm. It's lit up. There's doorways and hallways, and 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 there's eight or ten people, you know, standing around doing their things. There's some producers. There's goddamn some technical people, apparently not recognizable as wrestling folks. There's wrestlers. There's everybody, right? And you see. Jack Perry walk back from, you know, his match and you see then punk. If you know who you're looking for, then you can see him. He's got XXX on the back of his hoodie, but otherwise you don't really know who the fuck. Cause he's, his back is to the security camera. And, and I think that's the point he's trying to expound upon is the fact that if you didn't know what was going on, like you didn't keep up with it, keep up the, with the situation that happened on social media granted this happened like almost eight months ago so if you really didn't know about this then you probably don't know about this now so you're kind of if you're new to the show or new to what's going on you're going to be so out the loop there's like no kind of real explanation it's more of a if you know if you know type of situation and granted a lot of people do but i'm pretty sure there's going to be some that like wait you know, what, what's really going on here? Like, why are they showing this segment with no audio? Like, what's happening? So, it, it could be confusing for a new viewer or someone that doesn't really keep up with the social media side of wrestling. Which, if you don't keep up with the social media side of wrestling, you're actually in a good space. I'm going to just be honest with you. Because I'm telling you, Twitter is a cesspool when it comes to wrestling takes. Especially nowadays. And... If you're studying them, instead of everything else going on in this picture where people are talking or standing around, then you notice that they speak to each other for how many seconds. This artwork is wild, by the way. <laughs> Punk fucking shoves him, bam, 
and pushes him back a little bit, and then, goddamn, as we've heard happen, snatches him in a front face lock. Yep, pretty much. And then, as we've also heard, Samoa Joe was there. He was one of the people in the uh, in a camera shot all along. He runs up. Uh-huh. A couple things there that we heard from the what you have to presume is the Jack Perry side of things that were kind of disproven. We heard that Punk tried to hit Jack Perry but missed. Yeah. Punk tried to get him in a headlock, but he couldn't get it, and Jack Perry escaped. No. Samoa Joe had to pull CM Punk away. No. <laughs> it's the exact opposite of what happened. Chris Hero came around to help. Everyone was there. Punk did exactly what he said. All those stories about, mm-hmm. oh, he can't really fight. He didn't do anything to Jack Perry. That was spin from day one about this whole thing. Yep. Well, and the fact that this was a fight. I think was spin from day one. Because let's face it, Brian, of all the hundreds and thousands of locker room skirmishes, this, by the way, the first time a legitimate one's ever been caught on video. I'm not talking about a match that turns into a shoot or people Uh quit cooperating, get mad or whatever. I'm talking about something in backstage or the locker room. First time ever because nobody had cameras Mm -hmm. and nobody had phones and nobody had all that bullshit. But... Of all of the thousands of them that have happened in pro wrestling over a period of time, there was less to this than there was to almost any of them, wasn't there? Yeah, this this wasn't it wasn't a fight. It really wasn't. It wasn't no brawl. It, it wasn't. It didn't even get to that point. That's why it's like when it's all said and done, none of this none of this needed to even be seen by the public eye. To be honest with you, like none of this needed to be seen because it wasn't worthy of something being seen in a sense of, ooh, look what happened. It's just like, it's like a little skirmish. Like I've seen more brutality from Draymond Green on a on an NBA basketball court. And these guys are out here trying to compete to win games and win championships. I've seen that. I've seen, you know, worse there than what we saw in this footage hell we seen draymond green punch out his own teammate at practice legitimately punch him lean in and and try to sleep this man (laughs) seen that so what we saw here this was this was child's play how could this be any less than a shoving match you would escalated from shove to face lock boom pull apart in a story that's Good it. God, this wouldn't have been remembered till Thursday years ago. If you remember Samoa Joe at the media scrum after this, when he was asked about it, he was pretty nonchalant. You know, I've seen worse fights. It yeah. wasn't, wasn't much of anything. It wasn't. Tony <laughs> Khan, who was on the other side of the table, whose hand reached out like a fan at some point <laughs> in the video, he was scared for his life. Samoa what? Joe, who was in the middle of it, said, hey, it wasn't a big deal when you watch it. It wasn't. It wasn't. That, that's the thing. Oh, Hold on here. I got Paul Turner was there, the referee. Samoa Joe went was coming from the other side of of uh, from behind of Jack Perry to pull him back. A uh, Jerry Lynn, I believe it was from the footage available. I think is one who got Punk. And as soon as he, you know, they got there and Punk let him go. The same thing that he said on the interview. He backed up and looked at everybody. He turned to the right. You can see him all. You can't see Tony on this shot because he's around the corner on this Mm -hmm. shot. He turns around. He says, this place is a joke. You're a clown. Fuck it. I quit. Mm -hmm. He turns back around and yells something across the room and fucking throws his hands up in disgust and spins around and walks off back to his locker room. That's it. And there's with Jack Malachi. Perry standing there dazed and confused. Yeah, Malachi Black was going with him. Yeah. Exactly. So the point is, everybody's story was ridiculous. This wasn't even a fight, and they were all somehow kind of shocked by all of this that Tony feared for his life and <laughs> came out and said that publicly the that following was, week on television, was, as we've wild. said on this program since we heard it. It's wild. That was legal verbiage that he was instructed to say by his uh-huh. crack legal staff at the time. It probably would have been laughed out of fucking court once they saw footage like this, uh, trying to avoid getting sued. But also, so Tony, this was what he was feared for his life for. This was a goddamn, also the fight that we heard about that where Punk tried to sucker punch him and all this other shit. What mm-hmm. the fuck? 
The only sucker punch. So, yes. man, I've seen a lot of that shit. It's not her sucker punch. If you're standing face to face yeah. with someone and saying, hey, yes. you got a problem, let me know. And they're saying, do something about it. It's not a sucker and punch. And boom, both hands. People, I've seen that. Stop it. Stop it. You, you, you're not, you're not being objective about what you saw because you're a fan of AEW or you don't like CM Punk. When you're not objective like that, then your any point that you make, it's already invalid because we already know you have a preconceived notion. You don't like this person, or you're a fan of somebody else, or you know you're a fan of AEW. You, you're all glad for the CM Punk hate. Then anything you say here won't have no way to it. It wasn't a sucker punch. It, it would have been a sucker punch if Jack would have turned, Jack Perry would have walked away, turned around, and then CM Punk would have hit him or something like that. Or Jack Perry didn't see it coming. But dude asked, what you going to do about it? And he pushed him. You asked, he received. Like, what are we talking about? There's nothing sucker punch about that on the fucking pecs at a nice fucking velocity gets you a few feet away and then if he did something about it boom headlock done it's not a sucker punch if you're face to face it's not well, a yeah, sucker you're punch if you're just not... looking at it yeah, yeah. that's ridiculous it, but that's what i'm saying and and it's it proved the the story that punk had told to the point where old ariel hawani actually put a split screen up on Twitter of the video of the incident on one side and punk telling the story on the other side. And it matched up like the dark side of the moon and fucking wizard of Oz <laughs> almost to the second. He's narrating it. Mm -hmm. It is. So it, it validated punk story. But how and about what we had heard? Remember this apparently allegedly is the footage that Brian Danielson and the attorney saw that made it crystal clear they had to fire CM Punk. <laughs> it was this footage mm -hmm. that we kept hearing that. Well, Danielson's his friend, and he saw the footage and he said, there's no way that we can't fire him. Oh, yeah. Well, but now here's the thing. The attorneys I can believe, because there's still some of these fucking gutless morons out there on Twitter <laughs> going, well, he assaulted a co-worker. He should be fired and then and prosecuted. Dipshits, this isn't working in a fucking bank. Yeah. The goddamn the fucking hockey team got a fight last week. Which one of those are you going to fuck? Like I just said. Like I just fucking said. <laughs> is it right? No, but it happens. It happens. My man Draymond Green been out here punching people, kicking people, stepping on people, and he still has a job. Once again, people could say, well, maybe he shouldn't be in the league, but at the same time, He's still there. So this, this right here definitely didn't warrant a firing. But, I mean, CM Punk wants to leave anyway. So, I don't know. I don't know about that, man. Fucking fire a prosecutor, whatever, you dipshits. Yeah. It just wasn't even a goddamn fight. Nope. It, and, that's, and that's the point is, I could see the lawyers saying, oh, my God, but Danielson... I'm sure he's. I'm sure he's seen a bunch of better fights than this. Yeah, he's probably maybe and been in some. And the point again is, don't fuck around and find out. There we go. Jungle Jack. There we go. And do you, th it, do you think it, he it, did it because he was in front of Tony? Like he thought, like if there was ever a place I'd be safe from this guy actually kicking my ass, it's right here in front of Tony Khan. Probably. Probably just thinking. Well, he doesn't have time right now. He's got to go out. I, I could be back in the fucking hotel by the time he gets out of the ring. Whatever the fuck, you don't know. Like I said, because his, these are his friends. But the point is, it what it did was it confirmed the story that CM Punk told Ariel Hawani on, the, on that show of what happened. And whether you think that Punk should have fucking shoved his ass or not, personally I do, because if I saw that smarmy little fucking smart aleck face in front of me with those goddamn weird sideburns, I'd probably want to fucking <laughs> snatch him around the neck. But this was not a big fuck. What does sideburns got to do with anything, Jim? <laughs> the fuck was that? <laughs> I don't like your sideburns. I want to punch you. <laughs> Damn! A fucking fight is one worth firing your fucking top star over. No. But thank you, Tony, because we're getting a great programming out of it now. Yep. 
I'm talking about big time programming over on the other channels since you let Punk go over to be another one of the biggest stars. Well, Cody's got the spot right now as the biggest star in the business. But I think Punk's coming up behind. Tony's let both of them go in the last two years. Yeah, bro. I'm sorry. You you don't. That's like fucking Vince McMahon back during the WCW and, and Monday Night Raw or Monday Night War days. That's like Vince McMahon saying, hey, you know what? Stone Cold. I don't want you. I don't want you. You can go to WCW. And he willingly let D Stone Cold Steve Austin go to WCW. Or he lets even The Rock go to WCW. Even if it wouldn't have worked out, they at that time, they were the hottest acts in wrestling. You don't, you don't give that to your competition willingly when you can actually find a way to make shit work. Like, that just doesn't make fucking sense. It's, it's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Fuck. So the, the, it proves Punk's side of the, the story is what was legitimate and what happened. And you still, at the end of this, if you didn't know that you were looking at CM Punk, you didn't know you were looking at CM Punk. Yep. Did you? They've never said his name yet to this time. Well, nope. an important note, because we did see footage, I'm assuming you may have too, on Twitter, on social media, people in the room filming the the Tron, the big screen, so you get the live room reaction. Yes. They were chanting CM Punk. Yeah, yes. They popped when he pushed Jack Perry and when he grabbed him. Yes. They, they, they is, If they could get any of their angles that they do on purpose to get over like that in front of the crowd, they'd have something. But yeah, the, 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 the fans were chanting CM Punk in the building. But they still couldn't say CM Punk's name <laughs> on the video that confirmed the story that CM Punk had told. How does and this help Jack Perry in any way for the it, future? It, it, it doesn't because it's... Apparently, it, it somewhat did. Uh, I guess his, uh, his merchandising sales had went up, like his shirt sales had went up. So I guess, but I don't know if it's a, that's a long-term thing. Because to be honest with you, it's like he did get kind of punked out. No pun intended. Um, so I don't know. But that's the report after this happened. Uh, the reports were that his his shirt, uh, shirt merchandising uh, sales had uh, went up. Like I think he had recently sold out or something like that. So I'm not sure how true that is. But I don't know. I, I don't know. It's just this is just stupid in my opinion. You, they threw away so much fucking money. As soon as they see Jack Perry from any time that he comes back in front of a crowd, they're going to start chanting CM Punk. Aren't they? He's wrestling on a New Japan show in Chicago, I think, in the next week. Oh, boy. It, I'm, whether it's New Japan, whether it's AEW, they're going to be chanting CM Punk. If they're chanting CM Punk at an AEW show now, when there's footage of CM Punk choking out Jack Perry playing on the Tron without even being identified. And what do you think they're going to be chanting when this little dipshit shows his face again? Did you see, it, 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 oh, go ahead. Did you see that? You talked about the footage that Ariel Hawani put up. AEW working overtime into the middle of the night, putting up copyright strikes or going uh -huh. after people. Oh, yes. Who put up the surveillance footage. Uh -huh. Well, but now, now here, explain this to me, because yes, as soon as Ariel Hawani, he, he's a noted journalist. He got his uh, copyright struck from old Aubrey Ed, Don Stevens, uh, and got that uh, that video that I just talked about where he put it up split screen taken down mm -hmm. and everybody that tried to put the footage up they've been copyright striking them mm -hmm. but did aew copyright strike themselves or did they somehow realize that they had royally fucked up after they got the reaction that they got on so stupid, twitter man. and on social media where when they put the clip up on youtube of the buckaroos interview stupid which the buckaroos came back after the clip and supposedly closed up with trying to sell their tag team match. The security camera footage wasn't in there. Did they, did they copyright strike themselves 
out of trying to fix their dumb fuckery? I don't know, because, you know, you brought up an interesting point earlier, because we don't know how it works in England, but they got this footage, and they were able to air it, but no commentary, no running dialogue, nothing. Nothing to change the footage in any way. It could be their legal department saying that, but they took it out of the video. That means mm. on their own, they didn't put it there. But the strikes that people are getting, I mean, people are getting it pulled down from Jacksonville, Florida. So AEW is pulling down other people's videos for a different reason than they pulled down their own. Well, maybe it's the same reason. Maybe they realize, shit, we didn't want people to see this after all. But well, then riddle me this then. This is just Did they, they've got bad. What you're saying is AEW on their very own YouTube channel put up the the Maddie and Nikki's interview without the security camera footage. Did they edit it or do they pitch to footage that doesn't live there and then come back and <laughs> refer to it? I was told that it edits right from them pitching the footage to the thing with FTR, which we'll talk about shortly. They probably okay, but they were pitching to the foot. They were talking about that. That was the whole setup was talking about this they, footage. They post probably So it how out. odd does that look for somebody watching it on YouTube where they're talking about this footage was the whole reason they lost this match and this horrible distraction and all this shit with this individual. And then they go to an FTR interview? This was just a shit show. I don't care what nobody says. It wasn't worth the views that they got. It wasn't even... All right. It was better than the past couple of weeks, but... That was a shit show. That was embarrassing. That was embarrassing to see for them, considering that they could be so much better. But I think you gotta... Tony Khan gotta step down and kind of let other people run the show with better concise ideas that make sense to push their talent because whatever this is if this is a sign of things to come it's not looking good for AEW, bro they can do so much better can you imagine going through all this and then you're going to use the footage and then you can't make any money with it okay, maybe they can't because it's government footage they can't monetize it on youtube Maybe that's it. Maybe that was a clue they shouldn't have put it on TV. Maybe they shouldn't have. <laughs> Maybe that was the clue. So well, bad. they already knew they couldn't monetize anything on this TV show. Uh, so this, and again, before we even uh, get to FTR coming out right then to do the things that they did, people didn't like this. Even the no. normally the people who like this kind of thing didn't like this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Everybody started laughing at them and laughing at Tony, the the buckaroos, the 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 concept of this. People laughing that what the fuck the biggest star in your company is works for the other guys and you're trying to show footage of him and can't even say his name and he's beating up your wrestlers. What the fuck? For all the different reasons, did have we heard from Tony Khan on this matter since since in the twelve hours or whatever since this has happened? We have not. Uh, I see someone here. I remember we talked to one of his tweets before. I don't remember which one. Gareth WWE Gareth on Twitter. Yeah, I did see this. I did see this. He uh, WWE Gareth on Twitter got a shout out from uh, uh, the Jim Cornette uh this uh obviously this particular uh clip so i saw a lot of people talking about it on my timeline so that's crazy he got a shout out <laughs> got a shout out from the jim Cornette of podcast cctv footage is classified as personal data under gdpr law in the united kingdom cm punk could quite possibly do the funniest thing ever what I guess what would be the funniest I guess thing if it's, ever? If it's personal data, if the footage of Punk in the fight is Punk's personal data, I think that means he gets well, sue well, AEW well, for it, airing but, the footage. But no, but everybody in the fucking video then would be it would be their personal data. Would you have to have a class action suit or a majority rules, or can anybody just get pissed off about it? Hmm. I don't know. Well, we will find out. But no, nothing. No comment from Tony Khan. No comment from the Bucks. Stupid. This it wasn't even close, was it? I mean, I I know I've tried to block most of the Buckaroo, you know, fanatics out there, but uh, I saw a pretty much majority ruled that it was a stupid thing they did, <laughs> and nobody could figure out why they did it. Facts. It's one of the most amazing counterproductive moments in wrestling history. It's like, 
Hogan went on Arsenio, but it was at Bash 91. <laughs> no good came out of it. The live house. You know, the telling thing was the live house's lack of reaction to Edge's promo last week. Mm -hmm. That should have been a sign for these guys that they're making a mistake with all this. Leave it alone. And the CM Punk chants are louder now than they've been in AEW since he left. Because every now and then you'd hear some of them and the AEW fans would say, oh, boo, don't know, he almost killed the company. They're louder than ever before lately. This was an amazing self-inflicted wound to the groin by Tony Khan and the Young Bucks who were laughed at by everyone yep. who watched this show. Yep. And Jim, if I had said beforehand, would you put money down on whether this will be a positive or a negative for AEW, what do you think you would have done? Well, I would have put that money down courtesy of our friends over at DraftKings because <laughs> Brian... That was a good segue. But yeah, man. Yeah, they shot themselves in the foot on this one. Uh, big blunder. Big blunder. And they have some stuff that they can really sink their teeth into and really be pushing. Obviously, uh, Samoa Joe and uh, Swerve, that's, that's really something that they need to keep pushing, keep focusing on, keep building upon. That's a match I'm actually looking forward to seeing because right now Swerve is uh, becoming their top baby face or some would say he probably is, even though he does heal like things. People, you know, you know, think he's super cool, you know, and Samoa Joe is fucking Samoa Joe. He's a great, very great AEW world champion and he's killing it. He's fantastic. So I'm looking forward to Swerve and Samoa Joe having their feud. They need to focus on things like that. The good stuff on AEW television. Expound upon that. Keep that going. Don't worry about whatever everybody else is saying. Don't worry about what, you know, CM Punk had said on an interview. Let it go. Move on. Move forward. Focus on telling great stories and having great matches and building great feuds. And long-term booking that makes sense and isn't interesting. Because right now, right now, we're in a different period in wrestling. At one point, AEW was the superior product, especially with Vince McMahon at control and what he was doing with the product in WWE. It was very stale. So it was understandable to watch AEW more and be more invested in AEW. But now, things have changed. And WWE is starting to cook on a consistent basis. It's not perfect. No wrestling show is perfect. But it's much better than it's ever been. In, in a, well, I wouldn't say ever been. But in a very long time. Consistently pretty good shows. Consistently pretty good PLEs. This needs to be something that AEW needs to be focusing on for themselves. That's it. I still think AEW deserves a space in the wrestling world. Because competition breeds great wrestling for us fans at the end of the day i know a lot of people say oh this should be the death of aew it won't and it shouldn't because i don't want these guys to lose jobs so wwe wwe is the only real major company in the united states no i want these guys to work i want these guys to put on the best shows possible best views possible because if, if aew dies we don't have samoa joe as a world champion we don't have a uh, swerve as the the new you know trying to be the next top guy in AEW and the momentum he's getting we don't have some of these great matches and great potential feuds we don't have them so yeah comment down below let me know man how do y'all feel about uh Jim Cornette's uh assessment of this whole situation are you in agreement uh, in, uh damn I can't even talk are you in agreement with uh what jim Cornette had to say about this whole situation or do you disagree you think he's being a little bit too harsh and too mean let me know down below but i appreciate all love support road to 150k and i'm still on speeding youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all getting to me see you on the next one peace <laughs>